Um, we've got two little tabs here that we, we use to size. So you pull it out and then twist it to the side. Pull it out and twist it to the side. And so what that does is it just releases it so we can pull it out and pull it in. Once we find the size that we want, we're gonna just get those back to where they were. But it's super important that we don't just leave it like that because as, if you look here, you see there's like a little hole here. You need to make sure that it actually locks into one of the holes. If you just leave it, oh, my patient's about the size, um, I'm just gonna leave it here and you try and lift them up. This, <laughs> this is gonna like open up or like try and bend open like this. So just be really mindful, like if you leave it here, you either need to make it bigger so it goes to the ne next size up or the next size down. And so the way you want to think of it is like, make it as long as it needs to be, but as short as it can be. So if like, um, if you've got your patient, oh, here go. this is your patient. We want, we want to avoid having it way too long because then now they're going to slide up and down on that, especially if we're having to like move up, like up and down stairs or like a hill or it's just uneven terrain. We don't really want to make it super long. At the same time though, we don't want the feet hanging off of it. So as long as it can be, but as short, sorry, as long as it needs to be, but as uh, short as it can be. Okay. Um, when you're sizing it, the best way to do this is to keep it connected. Don't split it open yet, because then when you try and connect it, one side might be longer than the other, and it's the, so leave it as is when you're sizing it. Once you find, let's say I want it this, this length, I, I know it's clicked, it's not going anywhere. Um, now I'm gonna uh, split it apart. The way we split it apart is we've got this little, Wax in here, you're gonna push it in and pull it apart. And you're gonna do that clips. Same thing on the other side. Some uh, of the clamshells will have like two levers that you press and pull apart. It's a, just a different model, but it's, it all does the same thing. And then your patient will be here. Scoop underneath and clip it together. So let's do that just so you like get an idea. I just wanted to show you sort of all the parts. Um, yeah, who would like to be your patient? Okay. Nice. Um, and never lifting this, like if, if it's separate. We're never lifting it for our patient because look at all the things hanging down. We don't want to whack them across the face or anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to size it. Do you want to push it? Not good. Very good. I'm just going to line it up beside him. Loosen that. Open it up to about here. Some patients you might have to do like a half roll to get one side in and then um, 
get it under? Let's see what we got. This might be one of those. Um, and then when it comes to the straps, we're going to go up like an X, like this, and then another X down here, and then the last one just goes across. So you'll see in a second. Is it out of the order of strapping them to the board? Uh, usually the top. Top of the And then, so this is just like how you use the climbing shell. If this were a comic package, which we're going to segue into in, in a moment, we'll have all these other things. But in terms of like using the climbing shell for just lifting and education, this is sort of what it would look like. And his arms um, are in by his side. In this case, with that, what might the advantage be of like having the arms here? If it's, let's say it is a trauma patient. Uh... I mean, he wouldn't be able to move them and can't move anything else. Yeah, so think of like if you've got like a major trauma, lots of injuries all over the body, and they've got arms, uh, <coughs> fractured arms, you're anatomically splinting them into the body. And they're nice and, nice and tight. Any questions about like the clamshell itself? Or the straps? Let's lift them. Let's lift them up. Uh, when possible. Use four people to lift. Um, certainly, two people could, but this is a good, always going to be an awkward lift because you're coming from all the way from the ground, right? So, so if you have the the people to do it, put one person, put four people. Oh no, no, oh, you're staying there. What you said? Oh, it was an ill, or they're going to get up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just want to make sure that got stopped. Right there we go. Thanks. Uh, so let's take let's take four people, put one in each corner, and someone at the head is going to be directed. So if you want to direct, yep. great. So what you want to do is communicate, make sure everybody knows what the plan is, okay. make sure they know how you're going to count. Okay, control. Okay, so uh, everybody go for a corner. Uh, let's all go down. Uh, lift with the knees, go straight down. Don't bend over. Uh, back straight. Now. On the count of three, I will say lift. After three, I will say lift, and then we'll all lift together at the same time, okay? Okay. One, up, uh, hands on the corner there, right where the, I think this is a natural kind of handle right here. And I think you're lifting underneath, or it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, on the count of three, I will say lift, and then we'll all lift together. One, two, three, lift. That's it. Good lift, son. Good lift, strong. Lift your back, and we'll go underneath. Um, we will we'll, we'll walk around the room here. Okay, let's go towards that wall over there. Um, and now, then. Before, before we do this, what I'm going to do is this. Um, let go. Just let go. Okay, so you see where we're going with that, right? Mm. So now, I want you to go over the corners of the natural, the natural move. Lower down. Oh, now. Nice. One, two, three, low. Good. So now let's go to the cargo points instead. One person at the head, one person at the feet, one person at the side. Kind of where you really want to go in the first place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, let's try that again. We go down, and then, um, so we're grabbing one of the head, one of the feet, and two at the sides on that side. Uh, again, one, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. Strong and go. Right? It's a lot more control. He's still going down. But we're good, but everyone's going to be good. everyone's going to be able to handle it and a lot easier. It's <laughs> much less likely to actually to injure the other three people so much. Yeah. Awkward for you because you're carrying your other one backwards or kind of carrying behind your back. But um, it's just like trying to decide in any given situation between those options what's going to be the best thing for the patient, but most importantly, no offense, but best for you guys. Right? What's going to make you keep you both safe? We're always moving direction towards not not the head first, right? When possible. All right, everyone drop. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, lower. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. Another thing is like keep in mind is the height of the people that you're doing this with. So try not to have a short person. 
person um, like, like organizing so that it, it kind of balances out. Yeah. 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 Going upstairs too. Mm-hmm. And first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So going, going upstairs where you can turn around and go off. Yeah. Uh, this is like a life driving story. But there was an interview and they were taking some out of the water on the slime board. Yeah. And they strapped it. Obviously, just pretending as they dropped them by accident. And they slid head first. Oh, wow. Feet first. It was terrible. Downstairs. They <laughs> slid head first down. Trapped us into the water. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I've heard three lifeguards that have dropped people into the water during training. Four of them. Four of them. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. Yeah, anyways, we didn't bargain higher. Yeah. That's so scary. So scary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about um, maybe jumping a little ahead, but for future like fitness examinations for EMR, PCP, or any other levels, do they train you, like, do they test you on this sort of thing, put a load or a person lifting? You, you, there, is, there is a fitness exam for coming into to a senior organization. Mm-hmm. It's not specific on this. You'll get retrained on using all the equipment with the service you get hired on to. So that's part of, part of what they have to do is make sure that, you, that all their employees are trained to use the equipment safely. Okay. All this and more. But there's like a lifting assessment thing, a fitness thing. It's just not with like lifting weights. Lifting weights in a basket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I believe so, yeah. But yeah. It's kind of similar to the Perry test. It'll be like $75. Mm-hmm. So, next up, we're going to learn how to individually do the collar, pub corner, um, and the pump shelf. Now, we're going to kind of put this all together for, what we, for our multi trauma package. So, essentially, when we have a patient that has like, severe injuries um, throughout their body, like fractures in terms of like femur fractures, pelvic fractures, fractures to the arms, and we need to transport them, we're gonna package them in a full trauma package. That's gonna happen, that package, this whole thing is gonna happen during our critical interventions in our primary survey. So think of that as like your intervention, and that's when we're talking about like getting off scene within 10 minutes. It's like this whole package and everything in your primary survey within 10 minutes. Let's uh, put this all together. So, what we'll do? Yeah. 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 Um, we'll need one person to be patient. Go oh, three. Ah, okay. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, just clarification. Ten minutes. Is it wrapped up, ready to go, or like ten minutes, like? Ten minutes gone. Yeah. So, so if you're you're on an ambulance, you you're you're going to be in the truck in ten minutes. You'll see. As Dave beautifully said, right, you've got your time, time, is, time is really important. Minutes, minutes count. Um, the last thing you is know, just as part of our package, we have four straps that we put on, on the legs. So once you, like, you've got your pelvic line around and you've got the feet tied already, we're going to go for four straps on the legs, so it's going to be two above the knee, two below the knee. So you can use these zap straps, they stick to stick together. We're going to go from top to bottom, okay? When they're all together side. like that, is that considered one strap? Yes. Okay. If sometimes these don't work great or they're not fitting your patient, you can always use another triangular bandage instead. Uh, so we're going to go one, two, never over top the joint. So we're going to make sure we leave that space. And then one, two. If um, there isn't much space and it, it's like it has to go over the joint, what you're going to do is you're going to just fold it so that it's not directly on top of the knee. Okay? So one, two, three, four. Again, zap straps or kind of bandages work. So what's the reason for that? Yeah, uh, anatomically splinting, same thing. Um, we're just kind of anatomically splinting the entire body 
when we do a full color package. Um, yeah, strap, strap, strap. The last thing is